over the course of one horrifying and devastating evening, she told me everything. Every man she cheated on me with, who they were, how she met them, where and when they had SEX, how many times they had it, and even details of some of the more extreme acts as she engaged with them. Welcome back to They Did What, your source for the internet's craziest, most entertaining stories where I go over them, analyze them, and most certainly make fun of them. Today, your story title. I, a 33-year-old male, found out that my ex, a 33-year-old female, was cheating on me with multiple men. And big shout out to Joseph for sending me this story. And guys, this story is about a guy who's been with his girlfriend officially for seven years since sounds like he was 26. However, he's known her since he was 15 years old. They were best friends since 15 years old, inseparable, all that. And then got together later in life at 26. As you, I'm sure, all are well aware, a colossal mistake on his part for multiple reasons, which I'll get to. Anyhow, he thought all along they had a great relationship. And then one day she confessed to him she's been cheating on him for seven years with multiple dudes doing all sorts of very graphic things that she certainly wouldn't do with him, breaking this guy's heart. And obviously, he's kicked her, he's kicked her to the curb, but he's torn apart by this whole thing. That'd be a good one here to go over, making the point why I say how a lot of gals, a lot of gals, will deliberately keep guys that they know are in love with them or really into them as friends in, in, in layaway, if you will, for a time period that when they are ready, they're done rolling in the hay with Chad and Tyrone and the Bad Boys, then they can uh, cash in on their nice guy that been dragging along all these years in friend zone to be the type that they can settle down with and marry. And sadly, a lot will still cheat on them while they're with this guy for resources and security. It's really a shame. Now, at the end of the day, it is the guy's own choice to stay in the friend zone, if you will. A gal that he really likes and is attracted to, but she has no romantic interest. It's his choice to stick around and be her friend, hoping she'll change her mind. That's the dumbest thing in the world, but that's on him. Which is why I teach guys not to do that. You ask her out, she rejects you. Okay, fine, no hard feelings, you move on. You're not going to stay her buddy, the guy she calls up and talks to about all the other guys she really likes she's hooking up with, or buys her things and just... That type of guy. It, at least a disaster. And some of these girls have no sense of any kind of integrity or morals, and they do things like in this story. But anyhow, you'll see more as I go into this. This is a great lesson for a lot of guys out there. Starts off, says here, a bit of background first. My ex and I have been best friends since age 15. Smack! You can't be best friends with a girl. It's never going to work, particularly when you're in love with her. From the moment we met, we were completely inseparable. We actually didn't get together as a couple until we were 24, but she's my oldest and closest friend and has been the most important person in my life, one way or another, for my entire life. Smack, smack, smack. No, you should be the most important person in your life. You come first. Nice guy central here, and she only chose you at 24 years old when she so to speak, was done with her role in the hay, but she wasn't. She was ready to make the investment in her future with a guy she knew she had. As the title says, I found out that during our relationship, she cheated on me with many other men. I first heard something from a mutual friend of ours who told me that he was disappointed with some of her behavior. He wouldn't tell me the details, so I asked her myself, and she decided to come clean about what was really been happening for seven years while we were together. Seven years is a long time to pull the rug over one's eyes and cheat on them. It's terrible. You know, this is her her so-called friend, a guy she claims to care about. You know, she's been better off just breaking up with the guy. But she obviously was making investments on him for the future. Uh, says here, over the course of one horrifying, devastating evening, she told me everything. Dude, you did not get everything. Every man she cheated on me with, who they were, how she met them, where and when they had SEX, how many times they had SEX, and every detail of some of the more extreme S-word acts she engaged with them. Sounds to me she was enjoying putting salt in the wound and pushing her thumb in it, twisting the knife, if you will. I think she's punishing this guy. This guy obviously has been kissing her ass his whole life, and she women don't respect guys who kiss their butts and are weak. And his kindness has taken his weakness in her eyes. 
And many will sadly punish them in one form or another. I think that's what this is. Some were just one-night stands, but others she went back to multiple times. All the SCX was unprotected, putting both her health and mine at risk. So see, guys, I think it's warranted to say she's a piece of something. One of the other men even got her pregnant. At the time, she told me that the baby was mine, but instead insisted that she get a procedure. Together, we went through the painful process of, of the procedure, what I believe was my child. <sighs> That's a whole new level of evil right there. She was able to cheat on me so many times because of her job. She works in hospitality, I think hotels and restaurants, think hotels and restaurants, and so used to work late in odd hours and go out for very late nights with her colleagues. Well, a real man would be laying down the law and establishing boundaries. I get people have to do things because of their jobs, meetings, drinks with clients, a lot. But there's, if she's doing it all the time, that's certainly questionable there. Now watch this. I wouldn't see her in those evenings or know where she was. Uh-uh. A husband is always going to know where his wife is, if it's for business or not. And, fairly so, she will know where her, her a wife will know where her husband is. She told me that she kept her phone in her bag on these nights out and told me not to expect any replies if I tried to message or call her. Bullshit. That's because she's doing what she was doing. Ah, uh -uh. you're married or you're in a serious relationship with someone. You extend the courtesy of letting them know where you are and respond to their messages when you're out. I mean, you're out there with people and having drinks, you know, for safety reasons to know where they are. And he just went along with this like nice guys do. She never told any of her colleagues that she had a partner, despite being with me for many years, so none of them thought she was doing anything wrong. I don't know about that. In her own words, she wanted to have her cake and eat it. <laughs> she was eating a lot of something. Enjoying the single life, while, while also being in a serious long-term relationship with me. Right there. Benefits of the serious committed guy, resources, maybe one day putting a ring on her finger, but she can still go out and play. Selfish a-hole. We broke up a couple of years ago, so this is obviously a while ago, after a long battle trying to convince her to curb her partying habits and went back to being close friends. Smack! You can't be with someone that you're with for years and love with and then just go back to being close friends and she was a cheater on you. That's, that's, that's madness. Do you have anything else in your life? This is why guys need to have bros and guys need to have hobbies and ambitions and goals. They're, they're, they don't make their whole life about their girlfriend or their wife. That's very admirable that a guy wants to be a great guy to his wife and family and all that. I get that. But when you make her the center of your universe, she is going to lose respect for you. Okay? Guy's got to have other things going on and take care of himself. It's just, it is the only truth, but it's the truth. Regardless of what she told me, regardless of what she told me, left me completely devastated. For the first couple of weeks after she told me I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't concentrate on anything at all, and would just burst into tears whenever I was alone. When I did sleep, my dreams were terrible nightmares of her engaging in some of the, the acts she described to me with other men. This is why the whole guy finds out his wife's cheating, but stays with her anyway for the kids. He's never going to get this out of his head, ever, right here. And they weren't even married, but to him, he's made his whole fucking life about her, you know. It was so incredibly painful to find out that she had done all this, especially since I had always told her that cheating was the one thing in a relationship I could never tolerate. Dude, like she cared. And she knew darn well through your actions of being in the friend zone with her all these years, you're not going anywhere. You're, you, you may have said one thing, but your actions, she knew darn well meant something else. It's not by many months since I found out, and I'm still really struggling. Only now do I feel able to even talk about this. I find myself filled with a deep, overwhelming sadness every single day. Thoughts of her are still the first thing in my mind when I wake up in the morning and the last thing in my mind at night. Bro, you need some therapy. You are obsessed with her, but you made your whole life about her. You know, what about you? What about, do you have any goals? Do you have any bros to hang out with? Any hobbies? Because I guarantee, even a, a pet, a dog, a cat, something to occupy your, you know, I've been heartbroken too in life. Many of us have, but doesn't mean you make it's a full blown obsession here. If I don't have something to distract me during the day, thoughts of her will fill my head. Even though the relationship was already over when she told me, I, it now feels like the whole relationship was a lie. It was a lie, and that's terrible. And I feel bad for this guy, but he also has to tough it up here. I've had those uh, seven years of my life taken away from me, and I've lost my best friend too. 
smack. Dude, she was never your friend, okay, ever. Number one, you didn't want her to be your friend. You were, it was a fake friendship. You were staying friends with her prior to that because you wanted her. You were waiting for your turn, like the movies tell you to. So I don't want to hear it was just about the friendship bullshit. And, and, and even then, she wasn't your friend. A friend doesn't do this to somebody they care about. If she was a friend, she would have gotten together with you and realized that she wants to be single and would have broken up with you and would have been honest with you so you can move on, not kept you and then did all these things. That's not a friend. Thoughts about her and what she did still dominates my mind. They've completely destroyed my confidence and are causing huge disruption in my job and in other personal relationships. Any comments or thoughts on how I can better cope with the situation will be much appreciated. I was going to go into a few little updates here, but uh, like I said before, you must cut her out of your life completely gone. You need to come to terms that she is not at all who you thought she was. And that's obviously very hard since you invested so much of your life around this woman. You need to hang out with people, the few people you have that truly have your back, that love you and care about you. Spend time with them. People that really are good friends or family. Hit the gym, work out, exercise. I don't care what you do. Go for a walk for half an hour. Do anything to keep yourself moving and that will help you. But you can't have any contact with her ever again. Ever. Nothing. Not phone calls, not texts, not social media, not Morse code, nothing. It's over. Otherwise, you'll never get over. And it literally, if it takes you having to fucking move to finally move on because you've been obsessed with her since you're 15 years old because you're 33, fine. Chase after your career. Chase after your goals. Make new friends. Start a new hobby. Uh, 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 join a club. Join martial arts where you can talk to people, get to know people, and start new friendships. you got to get out of this and get out of, her out of your head. It's like she, you've been bewitched or something. And over time, you will move on. Maybe therapy, too. Now, a little update. He says, at first, I just want to th say a huge thank you to everyone who has taken the time to message me about this. I wasn't quite sure what the reaction would be, but I've been completely overwhelmed by how thoughtful, sympathetic, constructive, and encouraging the replies have been. Reddit can really help a lot of guys posting their story. That's why a lot of guys write me on my other channel, Strong Successful Male, which you should all join if you haven't done that. That's why they write me and they hear the stories. It helps them cope and move on. I read every single comment. I'm going to try to reply to some of the more frequent suggestions and questions here. A few of you asked me if I'm still speaking to her. The answer is no, not currently. No, you shouldn't be speaking ever to her. We stayed in contact for a couple months after she told me, but I found it too hard, and so we agreed to break contact. And that I would never, and I would, and that I would contact her again if, when I felt able to do as well. The past few months have shown me that I, I don't think that this can happen. You cannot be friends with her. You must move on. Not be around her at all. Regarding the situation that I've, I've received, I've done the following. Number one. I've cut all contact with her. I'm working on it. We don't share any social media now, and I have treated myself to a new phone, which I will be completely free of her. Number two, get into therapy. Done. I've been in therapy for months now. My therapist has been great and has definitely helped me get over the, the worst of this. Awesome. That's progress. Takes balls to recognize you got a problem and go to a doctor. And I'm sure this guy has no problem talking. But if that's what it takes, so be it. But also, you need to work on your own self-worth. Realize you're worth more, worth more than to be somebody's layaway for all these years and pining for them. You need material like mine. Three, get checked for STDs. That should have been the first thing you did. I did this one week, the week I found out. I insisted that she get checked too. It turns out she hadn't checked herself the entire time. Thankfully, you both came back clean. Dude, you got lucky. Number four, get out and exercise and hit the gym. Amen. I'm not currently the fitness type. There's a surprise. But at this point that I found out, I started exercising every single day. Well, don't do it every day. You can do six days a week. You need one day of rest. I'll make that clear. And get a good night's sleep and eat very well. That way you can you beat those muscles down in the gym and the workouts. And then you go home, get a good night's sleep to let those muscles grow. And also good food, good healthy, clean food to give you fuel to let those muscles grow. But good you're at the gym. It was the only thing I could do to combat the nervous energy I was constantly filled with and keep my cortisol levels from going sky high. I've fallen out of the habit now somewhat, but I will get back into it. Get your butt back in the gym. That is a requirement. Number five, vent to people about this. Uh, I've done I've, I've done this a little bit. I've got some very close friends I've been able to talk to about this, but I've been hesitant to talk about it too much. Simply because I felt too much shame and guilt for it having let someone trick me like this. This is actually one of the reasons why I made this post in the first place. I really need to find a way to speak about what happened in a way that didn't embarrass me. I get it's embarrassing. 
And I bet you those friends probably had suspicions about her all along. I'm willing to bet you. I'm sure some of them probably told them, dude, why are you waiting around for all these years or, and things like that? But it's progress. Number six, see her for what she really is. Understand that the image of her that I built in my mind and the person she really is are two completely different people. I'm going to make sure that I keep this in mind. Yes, absolutely. So thank you all again for your kind and supportive words. It's really helping me work through this. I really appreciate it. I'm going to read some comments in a second here, but again, I'm glad he's getting better. It takes a hell of a lot to crawl out of a hole. A lot of guys get stuck in a hole, don't crawl out. And he's doing a lot of things I agree with, but the gym, exercise, whether it's lifting weights or just riding a bike or skipping down the road or flying a kite, I don't care what you do, get outside and do something, you know, be consistent about it, eat healthy. It's key. And get good rest at night, not six hours sleep. If you're perfectly recharged at seven hours and 15 minutes of sleep every night, great. Some people are eight hours, some people are seven hours, whatever. You need rest. And take your time. Don't have any contact with her. And you will get over it over time with all the things like that. And in the future, if you're ready to date again, I guarantee he will because he's a relationship guy. Do not make the same mistakes you made this round. And don't put a girl first. Stop doing the BS they show you in the movies that all the nice guys do. It's all going to get you in the same situation. And unfortunately, he may end up attracting the same type of girl they did this time around. That's usually how it works. Now some comments. One guy says here, cut contact with her permanently. Block her and everything. Don't look at her social media. Yeah, do not do that. Do vent to friends, even if they're mutual friends, if you need to, but don't give her another moment of your time. You had the unfortunate bad luck of meeting a demented individual who was devoid of empathy and personal responsibility. This is not a reflection of you and your future relationships. Therapy is an option if you need it. I do suggest you lean into new friendships and relationships so you have new experiences besides what she did to you. Yes, that's why I say he's a get out and me join some clubs. Martial arts is a great thing to meet people and socialize against new people. And it's exercise. Ding, ding, ding. Or maybe, in a situation, move. Sounds drastic, but you could say she should move, but he may need to relocate so he can be far away from her and start a new life. Another guy says, dude, what the F? Listen, I know this shit is hard. I'm also going through my own stuff, too. That's left me in a bad place. But this girl that you fantasized about, the best friend since 15, the girl you loved, all that was a lie. The girl you built in your head is simply a fantasy. She does not exist. I gotta wonder, and in fact, I'm sure... Her true nature was shown many times, but he just refused to see it. The girl that does exist is cheating, I say cheating, W-H-O-R-E, who took your trust and destroyed it. She has horrible judgment, and if any guy knew her past and how she treated you, he would never want to be in a relationship with her. She's damaged and rotten to the core. She lost something so much greater than, than what you lost. She lost a guy who cared, loved her, and put her first, and gave her trust, and kept his promises. You lost a girl who cheated, lied, and broke up trust and trust with your heart. She has by far the greatest, greater loss in losing you. I agree with that. Not the other way around. I'm by no means professional, but the best advice I could give you, if you don't want therapy, is to start lifting weights, buy a motorcycle, and go download OK Cupid or Hinge, or whatever, and find yourself something, someone that is worthy of you. So, some good tips there. He is in no condition to be dating right now. He needs to do some serious work. He can't move on until he moves on from her, and he has moved on from her yet. And since he's known her since he was, he hasn't even in love with her since he was 15, and he's 33, we're talking about 18 years, more than 50% of his life, it's going to take him a long time to get over her, but he will. And that's why, again, I suggest exercise, working out to feel good, good fuel, good food, good rest, and maybe even relocating. I'm not talking on the other side of the country, but see if you can get another job offer someplace else, a new adventure to start clean. You know, that's what I think in some cases when God, when people go through such hardships, whatever that may be, sometimes it's, it's time to really do a clean slate. That means also where you live as well. Hell, I'm moving to Florida in six weeks. You know, I know one person down there, but it's for me and I'm doing it and it's not like I'm running for anything, but I need a change. And yeah, it's new, but you know what? And I'll adapt to my environment. Whether I adapt to that real feel of 115, 120 degrees in the fucking summer, that we shall see on that one. But everything else, I think I'll fit in there right just fine. But he's going to be okay. It's going to take time. So guys, don't be, don't do, don't do what he did. Don't be that friend zone thing. You ask a girl out, she says she's not interested. Okay. Knock, don't blow up like a jackass. Move on. 
Don't stay her friend and, and be that guy waiting around for your chance. Otherwise, this might happen to you, you know? And a lot of guys will keep guys on layaway on purpose, you know? And it, it rip your heart out seeing her dating a bunch of guys that are scumbags and you're there being her BFF waiting around for her. You know, don't be that guy, you know? She, and they're a-holes for keeping you there knowing darn well you love them or really like them, but also it's the guy's fault for sticking around. And also, guys, you should always keep your eyes open and pay attention to red flags. I wish him well. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below and let me know what you think about this. And make sure you like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.